I haven't done the math to get the exact number, but I would say in my 30 plus years in Estevan, I have spent 96.342% of the time preaching my Sunday morning lessons from a book. In other words, I have preached expositorily verse by verse through a book most of the time. There, there have been breaks, there have been times where I've just decided that we needed to hear, or I needed to hear, a verse from over here, or a story from over there, or maybe we just needed a break from going verse by verse through something. So every once in a while, such as the past month, I've just chosen what I think is interesting. Um, but I'm much more comfortable when preaching through an entire book. I like going verse by verse because it forces me to preach things that I might not preach otherwise. I have to preach whatever's next, whether I thought that was important or whether I want to preach it or not. So that's a good discipline. And, and I think by preaching through entire books, we get to hear the entire range of scripture. We get to hear everything that God is wanting to say about everything. So this week, we're going back to preaching our way through a book, and the book we're going to choose this time is 1 Peter. I looked in my files. Uh, back in 2002, I preached through 1 Peter, um, and the lessons I'll preach this time will be completely different than those ones, because I'm completely different. God doesn't change, but we do. Our needs change. The church's needs change. So, um, so I've thrown out all those old sermons. We're starting all over again, but we're going through 1 Peter. And, and I think it's time we hear Peter's voice again, because Peter's voice is beautiful. Uh, if, if John was called the Apostle of Love, Peter's nickname is the Apostle of Hope. 1 Peter is just such a hopeful, kind, joyful, encouraging book. Even when he talks to his readers about the struggles they're going through, he's still hopeful. He's still saying, God's going to use this. God's going to use you. It's going to be okay. It's a beautiful message. It's a beautiful book. He's always talking about God's graciousness and his kindness and his goodness and his faithfulness. And it's just something we need to continue to hear. In fact, uh, this week's sermon, we're going to look at the very first verses of the letter, of course. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, and he just explodes onto the scenes with rejoicing. Uh, that's what this sermon is going to be. Rejoice because of all these things that God is doing. That's where he starts, and that's where he continues through the whole book. Just keep rejoicing, because God is looking after us. The sermon is called, A New Life and a New Hope. I think this would be a great sermon, just for anyone, but I really think it would be a good sermon to bring others to if, if they want to hear what the gospel sounds like. What it sounds like when it's told beautifully. This is a scripture to let them hear. A New Life and a New Hope. In our Bible study, we're in 2 Samuel chapter 11 and 12. Uh, this is the story of David and Bathsheba. We started this last week, and as most of you know, this is a low point in David's life. He sins, he covers up his sin, things snowball and get worse and worse. Um, this incident, as bad as it is, has led us to some really, really good discussion. And so uh, last week, we started talking specifically about uh, lust and things like that, but also just about how sin uh, finds its way into our lives and what we need to do about it and, and, uh, and how to deal with it when we're not doing what we should. It's just been a very, very good discussion. In fact, uh, through the, after, the sermon, after the class on Sunday, over the following days, uh, several people gave me suggestions and comments and ideas and things to think about. And so we're going to circle back around. We're going to review what we did last week, talk again about the first part of chapter 11. And then I'm going to give you some of those comments and um, thoughts and things just to further our discussion and uh, add to it. And then we'll carry on through chapter 11. I'm not sure if we'll get to the end of it this week, but we might. So read 
Second Samuel chapter 11, chapter 12 if you like as well, and, and you'll get the whole story. The discussion we're having in this Bible study is not academic. It is actually uh, necessary and serious and very, very timely and good. In a society that sells everything, uh, with racy pictures and lewdness, and, uh, and, and a society that just basically says, ah, none of that really matters, it's not a big deal. Christians better understand that it does matter, and it is a big deal, as is all sin. So, um, it's a good discussion. And it's a good discussion to remind us that we all struggle, and we all need help, and we all need to help one another. Uh, the worst thing we can do is to pretend we don't struggle at all. Uh, again, lunch is being served on Sunday, and so uh, bring enough for your family and one other so we can invite people to stay. People have been staying till 2 o'clock last week, so that visiting time is really valuable and really good. I think we have a lot of good things to share. I think we have a lot of things that we can uh, we can learn from on this Sunday. And so I'm looking forward to sharing those things with you. I'm looking forward to seeing you there.